Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. A viewer has requested how you might go about matching a ZEP antenna at VHF to 50 ohm coaxial cable. Well, this is the ZEP antenna. The red line here is one half wavelength connected to a quarter wavelength matching section comprising parallel wire line short circuited at one end and open at the end where the line feeds the antenna. One quarter wave electrically so you need to use the formulas uh, generally about 90% as long as the wavelength in free space. Uh, you should know those formulas. Uh, if not, you can look them up, but it's they're not particularly important here in terms of those uh, that are just complicated things. The idea is to match this one half wavelength radiating element fed at the end to 50 ohm coaxial cable and uh, the viewer requests that I do an example at VHF that would be between 30 megahertz and 300 megahertz but actually this will also work at any frequency. The caveat is that this matching section the two conductors must be close enough together so that they the signals that they radiate cancel each other essentially everywhere in space. Uh, at uh, VHF say 144 megahertz that might be uh, about a centimeter and the diameter of these radiating elements may be about two millimeters if the feed line and the radiating elements can both be two millimeters. This should be open wire line, solid rods, two millimeters in diameter, short circuited at one end and open at the other end, the end where uh, the antenna receives its energy. So the matching section shouldn't radiate. The antenna should. Uh, and at, uh, this is an example shows a vertical antenna. It's a half wave vertical fed at the bottom with a matching network that allows it to make a good impedance match to 50 ohm purely resistive impedance. Now the trick is this matching section there's a very high purely resistive impedance at the end of this half wavelength radiating element. Generally over a thousand ohms and possibly several thousand ohms. At this end of the matching section of course the radiation or the characteristic impedance the resistance is zero ohms purely resistive impedance of zero ohms and this can match the this is will match automatically whatever this end impedance of the radiating element happens to be say 2000 ohms so as you move up and down along this matching section you get variable impedances all purely resistive, that means no reactants, ranging from zero ohms at the bottom to whatever this 2,000 or so ohms might happen to be. It doesn't matter uh, what this is. What matters is that everywhere along this line you get a purely resistive impedance. Now it looks like these are fed at different heights 
along the matching section, but theoretically the shield of the coax and the center conductor of the coax go to points equally distant from the bottom of the antenna. I only drew it this way because it made it a lot easier to draw, but, but if you slide this 50 ohm coaxial cable with the center conductor going to the longer portion, that's a half wavelength plus a quarter wavelength or the three quarter wavelength section, and the shield going to the quarter wavelength section, if you slide this up and down, this 50 ohm coaxial cable, you'll encounter variable impedances, all purely resistive, that can range from 0 ohms up to, what did I say, 2,000 ohms? So somewhere there exists a point along this matching section where there is a purely resistive impedance of 50 ohms. It's probably closer to the bottom than I've shown here. But in any case, that point does exist. You find that point simply by using a standing wave ratio meter until you get a one-to-one -one SWR on your 50 ohm coaxial cable. Once you've done that, you have the complete antenna. The radio goes into 50 ohm coaxial cable and sees a purely resistive impedance of 50 ohms feeds to this matching section which in turn provides the necessary radio frequency signal to the end of this radiating element so that it will radiate into space. If it's vertical it will be an omnidirectional horizontal uh, in, a, in the horizontal direction, an omnidirectional uh, signal vertically polarized in the horizontal direction and in all directions equally strong. So that is how you go about doing this uh, little chore of matching 50 ohms, purely resistive, to whatever the impedance of this radiating element might happen to be. You simply have to conduct experiments by finding the best point for this 50 ohm coax. Again, these two connections here look like they're at different levels, but really they're at the same level. They're right next to each other but you can obviously see the difficulty I would encounter if I tried to draw it like that. Either these two dots would run into each other, well they always would run into each other. I might not be able to draw the 50 ohm coaxial cable properly. Blah bitty blah bitty blah. That's how it would go. So I hope that answers your question my friend. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 and so long, which, regardless of the antenna type, polarization, impedance, or any other characteristic, in my native fist, always translates to da-da-da-da-da-da. -da 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 -da.